Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this video we are going to be talking about the basics of paths inside of GameMaker Studio. Now this is going to work for GameMaker Studio 1 and 2, so follow along in whichever software that you are using. Now paths are a way of getting an NPC, an object of any kind, to follow along a path. And that path you can create in an editor, or you can create it dynamically as your game is running through code. Both of them allow you to have an NPC follow a path. You can change that path as it's running. You can reshape it. You can reassign it. There's a lot of functions that you can do. And paths can be very useful if you know how to use them. They are the building block for doing much more advanced things, such as motion planning and grid-based A-star algorithms. So we are going to look at the basics of them so you know how to use them and start them and stop them. And then we will... In another video, get onto more advanced topics. But let's dive into it. Now, if you want to copy along with me, I have the project for you in the description below so you don't have to worry about setting up a tile set, animating your character, all of that's already in there. So go ahead and download that in the description and follow along. The first thing we're going to do is look at some of the built in variables that a object has that deals with paths and the functions that are associated with them. Now, these variables are built into every instance in your game. You have the index that it's assigned to, the position along the path, you have position previous, speed, scale, orientation, and end action. All of those are useful, and if you need to get access from them or get information from them, you can just by typing them in. To start a path is actually very simple. You have path start, and that's it. To end a path, you have path end. And so let's get started. Let's go into our workspace and we are going to create an object and we're going to call this OBJ guard. We're going to assign a sprite to it and we're going to add a create event. Now before we type any code in here, we are going to go over to the resources here and right click on create a path. We're going to do this in the editor, not through code dynamically. So we're going to name this patrol path one. And this is the path editor window. Now, this isn't very useful. I can make a path in here, but I have no idea where in the room it actually is going to relate. I can see these grid lines and I know the X and Y coordinates, but that's pretty hard to actually do properly. So instead, what I tend to do is open up the room, come over here and create a new path layer, and you can assign this path any name you want. We'll just call it the exact same thing and then you select your path right here, and you can actually start clicking on here to make a path. Now by default, it uh, snaps to the grid at 32 by 32, but I want it to be eight by eight because my tile set's fairly small. So I'm gonna move this and I'm gonna recreate the grid that we saw in the beginning, just like that. It is super simple to set up a path because now it will start here and it will end here, and these are all the vertices, the indexes in between them. So the options to change your paths are right here. You've got color, so you can change the color of the path. You can do straight lines or smooth curve. Uh, it looks kind of like this when you do smooth curve. You can also close a path. So that means that it's going to, from the end, take it all the way back to the beginning somehow. And let me actually change this back to white so you can see a little better. Uh, and then you have precision as well. Now precision, it only matters when it's on a smooth curve. So if I change this to one, you can see that the precision is much more precise. And if you jump up to eight, well, it's a little more curvy. Now I'm gonna do a straight line here and I'm not going to have it be closed. So that is the path inside of our room. You can have as many paths as you want. We're just going to set up one. And then inside of our object, inside the create event, all we have to do is say path start we're going to assign it the path patrol path one we're going to give it in speed of two an end action which there are four options you can do continue if you have a closed path when it gets back to the beginning it will just continue along the path again you can restart which will take the object that is following the path and at the end of the path it will warp it back to the beginning instantly you can reverse, so it will follow along the path, but reversed, and you can stop. We are going to select reverse, 
And the last option here is for absolute. We are going to put true in here, and then I'm gonna give you an example of what that means. You have absolute or not absolute. Inside of our room, let's click on the instance layer and then drag in our OBJ guard. I set the path follow to absolute. That means that this guard is going to follow the path exactly where it is in the room along those X and Y coordinates. That means even if he starts right here, he is going to be instantly warped to here when that function begins and then he's gonna follow this path just as it is in the room. If it was not absolute, instead he would start following this path wherever he was at. So if he would be right here, that means that he would go down a ways, over a ways, down a lot, and then over again. But he would be able to go off the screen, run into objects that you weren't expecting because he is following that path not absolutely. He is following it, but where he is at relative to the room. Now, that's actually all the code we need. We press F5 and it will run, and then he is going to follow this path. That function starts it and is really what you need to do very simple, basic paths. Obviously, there are a lot of other functions associated with the path. So, if we come over here and I type path underscore, you can see those built-in variables we talked about. There are the constants, which are the path actions. And then you have all of these functions that you can do. Path add, add point, append, all of these are for dynamically creating paths inside of your game through code. The other important one is path end. So if I were to wanting to stop an object following a path at any time, you would need to say path end. You can also say path speed equal to zero if at any time you wanted that object to just pause along the path. And then you can resume the speed at any time that you would want to by putting it back to its original one or to a different speed. You can also increase and decrease the speed anytime you want. The only thing is path index is a read only variable. This tells the object which path it is assigned to and you cannot assign an object a path through path index, it must be done through path start. All of the other built-in variables you can get, you can read and write to those. So path position is another very important one. This is actually going to return something between zero and one, and that value is gonna be how far along the object is in the path. So if we open up our room here, if he was right, let's say right about here, um, he would be probably right about 0.5, maybe a little bit less along that path. His path position would be 0.5. That means that he is halfway through the path, and when he comes back over here, uh, he would be 1. He would be all the way done with the path. So you can read path position, but you can also set path position. If he is starting the path and you want him to start the path absolutely but be halfway through it already you can set path position right after path start which would work and that actually covers the basics of paths now if we run our game again compared to what you saw in the beginning you'll notice that our guard isn't changing his sprite based on the direction he's walking the cool thing about using paths is that you then have access to the built-in variables like direction which is being set because game maker is controlling the speed and the movement of the player we can use direction to our advantage if all you want to know about is paths this is a good place to stop i'm going to show you kind of a cool way that you can set up your objects to change their sprites based on the way that they are walking so we're going to add a step event here and let me explain this before we go along we're going to be using the built-in direction variable but direction in game maker studio it goes as follows so you have uh, zero degrees being right 90 being up 180 being left and 270 being down so what you may think would make sense is something like this you'd say if direction is greater than or equal to zero and direction is less than or equal to 90 then you would say something like uh, sprite index equals SPR guard walk right now guard walk right is in the sprite i have we'll adjust that in just a second but this is actually not going to work very well for you because even though zero is directly right if your player 
inside of your room is moving like this, where it's down a little bit, but still mostly to the right, where it makes sense for his sprite to be looking right. If you're using 0 to 90 and in 90 degree in increments, you are going to then, when he's like this, we have him facing down and it's going to look very awkward and we don't want that so instead I've taken the time to figure out a fairly good system of numbers that you can plug in here and have your sprite while he's following a path or doing really anything at all have that have that object update his sprite index accordingly and the way to do that is through this very crudely drawn sketch pad right here so let me explain what it is 0, 90, 180, and 270 are the four directions. So you've got right, up, left, and down. Now, these little, uh, I'm not even sure what to call them, uh, they are the area that makes the most sense for the sprite to be turned when they are walking that direction. So if he's walking to the right, but he's going down a little bit or up a little bit, it makes the most sense for him to be facing right. If he is going up, but he's a little bit to the right or left, then he will still be facing up and so on and so forth. So these numbers right here are the actual values that, to me, I found work very well if you want your object to update their sprite and look naturally. The only one that is different than the others is the first one. So let me, let's code that right now so I can show it to you. So this is actually gonna be if direction is greater than or equal to 306 and instead of an and we're not putting an and we're actually going to put or direction is less than or equal to 45 sprite index equals spr guard walk left and the reason that it's left is that we are going to take the image x scale and turn that around on itself so it's going to mirror itself along the x-axis, which will actually turn it to the right. Now, the reason this is or is because when we are walking to the right, when we're moving in the right direction, we need it to be anything greater than this or less than 45. For the other ones, it's gonna look like this. If direction is greater than or equal to 46 and direction is less than or equal to 135, and is the proper thing here. 2 ampersand stands for and. Uh, that is correct because we need it to be in between those numbers. There is no number that is greater than 306 and less than 45, so we need an or right there. So with that, let's just type out the rest of this, uh, and I'll show you that then our guard is going to look right as he is walking around. So I've got the numbers on another screen, so let me just type those in. So if direction is greater than 136, and direction is less than, ooh, can't type, less than or equal to 225. Sprite index will equal SPR guard walk left, and image x scale equals one. And the reason we're putting in that image x scale every single time is that we need it to reset itself because it might be negative one if we were just walking to the right. And we don't want it to look weird. Okay, let's press F5, run this, and watch as our guard object now will change his sprite based on the direction that he is walking. And that just gives your AI a much smarter feel and helps it to not stick out like a sore thumb as he is moving along that path. So that's basic paths for you inside of Game Maker Studio. Just using path start, there are a lot of limitations, such as if you put a solid object in front of that object that is following the path, it is going to run into it and just stay running into it for all of eternity. It will never reach the end. There are smart paths, which is what we're going to look at in the next video. We're going to look at potential steps that they can look at and say, am I running into a solid object or a specific object, and then how do I get around that? So that will be the topic of our next video, which I hope you will join me for in more advanced pathing techniques. Thank you very much for joining me for this one. I hope that you learned. And as always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later.
If you'd like to support me more than just liking and subscribing to my channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon like all of the awesome people on the screen right now. They get to vote on upcoming tutorials and get one-on-one -on -one training sessions with me each month. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you later.